What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're taking a look at a game called Timberborn. Where you are a beaver. Mankind has fallen. All of mankind is dead. They're gone. It's post-apocalyptic. And the survivor, the ascendant to sentience, is not who you expected. It's beavers. We thought maybe it would be dolphins, perhaps whales, maybe chimpanzees, you know, bonobos. All of those different animals had a pretty solid chance at becoming the sentient lords of the planet. No! It was beavers, just silently chewing wood in the background until victory arrived. Mankind has fallen, so let's build ourselves a little beaver civilization right now. We've got plain beavers. That is literally their description. They are beavers that are plain. How's that go for, like, a Wikipedia entry? Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Uh, the first thing we really, really, really want to do is we really, really, really want to build a carrot field. If we don't build a carrot field, you're going to die around, like, day three because you don't have enough food. You don't start out with any food in this game, and nobody tells you that. My suggestion for fixing that is that, like, in one of the alpha builds or one of, like, the further builds, uh, what they should probably do is add, like, a berry patch or something, and then when you target it for harvest, it should be like, hey, just so you know... This is the last of the food. Maybe you should get started farming, maybe, just a little bit. But I'm going to send my beavers off to work. Work, beavers. Work, beavers. Go chop down these trees. Go knock those things down. If you've ever had beavers on your property before, like if you live rural, beavers are destructive little bastards. They are gnarly. I'm just letting you know that you do not want beavers on your land if you can help it. I grew up kind of rural. We had beavers move onto our property one season. They wiped out everything. If there was a tree, they destroyed it. Facts. Like, beavers do not care. Beavers will knock over every hundred-year-old tree on your property in order to make their little domicile. And you're not allowed to hunt them. You're not allowed to trap them. You're not allowed to move them. You're not allowed to interact with them. They're a protected species where I live. And so the problem you run into is, like, how do you get rid of them? Well, it turns out you got to file a whole bunch of bureaucracy with the government. They will send out, like, I don't know, the Beaver Defense Force or something like that. They have, like, special uniforms, and they dance like the Ginyu Force when they show up. And then they will relocate the beavers. And so they came out. They tranquilized the beavers. They threw them in the back of, like, a government van, Gestapo-style. And then the beavers just, like, woke up somewhere else, just like, what happened? And then they live there now. But yeah, unless you want your entire backfield to look like a big mound of stumps, uh, don't let beavers move into your property. Beavers are pretty gnarly little guys, and they are not playing. Their capacity for annihilating everything is pretty good. They're pretty good at it. They're pretty solid. I know they don't strike you as being a particularly destructive breed of animal, but trust me when I say... Beavers will get down. Like, beavers will cause problems. I would like there to be room for, like, a road or something around here. Let's have all these guys live over by the farms, actually. There we go. We'll have these guys live, like, right here. We'll build, like, two little houses right there. I think we're going to need three houses in total for our beavers to live in for right now. Because each house will store three beavers. We have enough space for three beaver storage. But they do need to make the water spot, too, because people will die of thirst if you don't build the water spot. There's a couple of gotchas. This game is in very, very early access right now. And so, like, this is not stuff that I expect to be all ironed out at this portion of its gameplay. This is actually the first alpha that you can possibly get. I'll give you a link to the developer's Discord at the end of this video. Essentially, you can get this game right now. It'll install through Discord. Because this game is not publicly available. But what you can do is if you go and you follow their Discord, you join their Discord server, it'll have a little download section that you can go to and you can add it to your Discord downloads. And you can play this game right now. It seems to have a pretty reasonable chunk of content. If you're wondering what the game is, it's basically Beaver Banished. I don't know what to call it other than that. It's Beaver Banished. That's all you really need to know. If you enjoyed Banished, then this is Banished with sentient bipedal beavers. That's pretty much it. Uh, let's knock out some of these buildings over here. It looks like we got both the water spots done. Today is looking like it's going to be a fairly productive day. We have enough food around to last us... I think inside of our storage, we have enough food for a couple of more days. They do die really, really quickly from not having food. Uh, it's not like real life where you can last, you know, 15, 20 days without food. In this game, you've probably got like... 24 hours to 32 hours tops before you die to hunger. And so we're actually, we're running out of food pretty rapidly right now. We got enough food to last us like one moss day. All right. Oh, the twigs are edible. 
Well, there you go. They do have the berry bush. My entire complaint then has been laid to rest. Never mind. Ignore the entire chunk of what I just said earlier. Let it be declared amongst the beaver realms that Splattercat is a moron that didn't realize that beavers could eat birch trees. So there you go. I learned a new thing today. I thought that those were just trees. I thought they were just like normal trees that don't give you logs. Instead, they give you twigs. Twigs that are edible. And look, they bring little crates of twigs back to the building. Oh, look at that right there. We've got 23 twigs. We're living in luxury now. So the developers actually did the thing that I suggested. And I just decided to complain about it and talk about how it was a problem before fully utilizing and realizing the gameplay mechanics. I'm going to take a slap on the wrist for this one. Splattercat is going to accept his stripe. He's going to admit that he was wrong, and he's going to say, you know what, developers? You guys are smarter than me. You guys have greater foresight than I do. Congratulations, your earliest alpha does not have the problem that I said that it had. Never mind. This is the problem with first impressions. Sometimes you miss a mechanic along the way. You throw the baby out with the bathwater. I thought a tree was a tree in this game. Trees, pine, birch, yew. A tree's a tree, right? No. In fact, some trees can be eaten by the lovely little denizens of your domicile, and some little trees cannot be. Funzos. Extra strength funzos. All right. Well, they're going to get done with those birch trees over there. That should give us enough food to last a ridiculously long amount of time and then once they've thrown the little birch trees down inside of their little I don't know beaver gobs they're chopping on those trees pretty fast too man they're like little tree chopping gods these guys are out here with that speed that expediency that ability that proclivity that acuity I don't think acuity works quite as well I think that was the odd man out one of these things may not be like the others, but one of these things is definitely not wrong. We have 21 twigs right now. I guess we just eat twigs. We sit around and put them out the corner of your mouth while you're sitting there looking at the back field of carrots. Well, yeah, my grandfather farmed me 75 acres of beaver carrots. I'm going to farm these just like my son after me going to farm these. We just simple folk out here. Ain't much to be spoke of like them beaver scientists. They're fancy beaver degrees. Let me tell you what, can you earn that degree on an empty stomach? Nope, I'd be willing to reckon that you can't. So you know what, me and my family, we gonna keep on farming them carrots right there. We gonna keep on farming them carrots far on into the future. Until you know what, the carrot need is satisfied. I would like for you guys to wake up. So every day has a workforce. They get unhappy if you make them work too much. The red is the quitting time. The blue is the time where we will be, I'm sorry, the blue ends. We go all through here. This is our work hours. These guys are thirsty, so they're going to go down onto the river. Some of that fine, holistic, gluten-free water. And they're going to chop down some more trees so that we can actually live inside of houses, maybe. There you go. Drop them things off. Drop them things off, my guy. I can also build a log pile. I would suggest that maybe we do that. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll drop the log pile right there. We'll go ahead and drop a log. You know, I've been known to drop a log in the past. It's a thing that I've done, and our first house is actually officially finished off. So there it is. It's facing a weird direction, which tilts me. Is it, though? No, the door's on the right side. I didn't mess that up. I messed up the twigs, but I didn't mess that up. Uh, we've got a lot of food coming out. So we're at 30% right now. I'm going to keep an eye on our food stocks. I don't know if there's any more birch trees around. We probably have to build a ramp or something to get up. To oh, never mind. There's already a ramp over there. Not a lot of logs to figure out. Well, we've got production over here that we can play around with. So we've got a grill over here where we can cook paturters. And we've got ourselves a carpenter that will make planks out of our logs, but it requires power. It looks like we can make a water wheel right here, which is pretty rad, actually. That's cool. So apparently they've mastered cog and steam power. They figured it out. I mean, it's not implausible. People back in medieval times had water wheels. They used it for grinding grain, which is completely different. But hey, it's better than pushing a millstone around by yourself. Millers were known back in like medieval to post-Bronze Age times for being like really beefy dudes because like carrying millstones around and pushing millstones is actually pretty ridiculously difficult work. A lot of people underestimate that work. And so, strong as a miller was one of those sayings from back then because millers were yoked. They were usually pretty buff dudes that controlled the food supply too. So really, if you were going to have anybody control the food supply of an entire civilization, it should probably be the guy that's the strongest. You know, you just body slam somebody into submission like a baby panda. 
whenever they start getting out of line and trying to take too much out of their bread rations. I feel it. Well, let's go ahead and bypass the night real fast. These guys don't really have anything else going on anyways, aside from, like, sleeping. We'll let them dream their little beavery dreams. Beaver houses are really cool. If you've never looked up on the internet what a beaver house looks like, like a cross-section of a beaver house, it's pretty rad. They actually, they build it, and then there's a mound on the inside of it, and it's actually airtight, so it uses, like, fluid dynamics to create, like, a little area with a chimney air hole that the beavers live inside of. And they live on top of the mound, and then they'll also have little exit gates that they can put, like, their refuse and all of their trash and everything else outside of it. Kind of cool. And then once that place has been run low and they don't feel like repairing it, they'll build another one. But that requires a lot of trees and materials, which is how beavers get themselves into problems. It's how beavers cause issues. Hopefully they'll finish off this beaver lodge pretty soon. I actually would think the game was pretty cool, too, if you built your beaver houses, like, in the middle of the river, and then all of this stuff out here was for, like... It seems to me that beaver society would not develop into terrestrial living very quickly. Like, they would probably adapt and learn and get smarter and make their beaver houses even cooler and connect them with, like, little wooden logways and stuff like that. I don't know. I feel like there's an aesthetic angle that this game is missing out on right now. Like, they've gone to the difficulty of having beavers be the main characters, but there's nothing particularly beavery about any of the buildings. Just something that I thought about while I was playing this, while I was testing it out. Uh, we've got a social campfire right here that we can place kind of a town center. Probably not a terrible thing to do. A place for the little beavers to hang out. The little beavlets, I guess. I don't know what you call a baby beaver, a pup? I don't know. I'm gonna call them beavlets for now on, because, like, beavlets sounds better. We've got enough housing for all of our citizens for right now. We probably want to look into how we can... Oh, we can do decorations and monuments and stuff like that. We haven't unlocked it yet. But maybe later on, we've got footbridges. We've got wooden paths that we can put throughout our little... Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I'll probably connect everything via a path so that they'll move a little bit faster. Or maybe they'll get some kind of bonus out of it. We've got a carpenter over there. We've got a small warehouse. We've also got a hauling post. So we can assign specific people to be haulers, and they'll get a strength bonus so that maybe they can build a little bit faster or, like, haul a little bit faster. It's kind of cool. We've got leisure over on this side. Housing. I don't see anything in there. I know there's a science building. We just need to find it. There it is. So we've got an inventor's hut. How big is the inventor's hut? It just takes 12 logs. Okay. Well, I mean, we could put an inventor's hut over here by, like, the main thoroughfare of town, I guess. It wouldn't hurt to have some science going. Like, it is going to hurt our workforce. But, like, we've got five adults right now. How many people work here? Like, maybe one? Oh, one of our babies grew up. Never mind. So we've got extra workforce anyways. One of our babies got a little bit big and beefier. I assume these little guys are going to breed as long as they have a house. I don't know exactly how population control works in this game. I don't see anything like a breeding mound or anything else like that, like Zerg style that can increase the amount of beavers that we have. So I'm going to assume that we're good to go. As soon as they get done with all those trees over there, I guess finish off the remainder of these sticks. We're not quite done with all of our carrots, so I'm hoping the carrot rotation will work out once we get there. Uh, so we have an inventor now. Let's see if the inventor goes inside. So where's our little inventor at? Where's our industrious little big brain? There we go. In a world of smooth-brained beavers, one big brain decided that making this weird little thing turn over here would generate discoveries for the future glory of our society. Quickly, let us invent guns and nuclear weapons so that we may run off our hideous rivals, the coyotes. But work in haste, brothers, for the coyotes too toil and labor towards the business of science. We must defend ourselves. Another day, brothers, and beaverdom prospers. Let it be known that the coyotes have been thwarted and thrown back, howling into the mists. With our great and slapping tails, we have sent them violently from the brink of our society place. Trash pan. There's trash bins over here. I just noticed that there's little beaver trash cans. It's kind of wild, right? Oh, we got more little beaver kids. They're going to grow up. Okay. Well, we're not done securing the food supply yet, so we'll keep working on that. I'm going to speed the game up a little bit faster. Our workflow has been somewhat blunted by the fact that we don't have that many beavers going out to do beavery stuff. We probably need to chop down some trees, too. Yeah, there we go. Chop down a few more trees over there as well. But food is the most important for now. I don't know if these stumps regrow over time. You would assume that there would be like little saplings and stuff that were already soiled. But I guess we probably need foresters to make sure that that happens. Now we've got logs. Have you ever seen the video where the guy, he breaks 
This dude's channel blew up on YouTube. I forget his name. But basically all he does is try to break video games by playing them not as they're intended. And he broke Prison Architect. And he made it so that you don't even need to build a prison. You just deny all prisoners. And then what you do is you just make a ton of trees. You plant a ridiculous surplus of trees and hire a ridiculous quantity of lumberjacks. And you harvest the trees. And then you sell the wood. And you end up with like billions of dollars. And you don't even need to play the game. Like that's all that he does. He breaks games. Like I think he runs a series called like X Game is Broken. And then he just sits there and he breaks games over and over and over again. And that's all that he does. It's a pretty entertaining channel though. It's a pretty unique take on gaming. Like I show off games. He breaks games. Like I would say that like my video production process is actually not that difficult. I'm going to give you a little bit of a secret. I don't do a lot of editing. Each of my videos probably has like 10 to 15 edits and cuts. Maybe. Like, at the most, and that's just to keep the flow going so that you're seeing the maximum amount of gameplay for a 30-minute video. The majority of my time is spent actually hunting games. Like, I spend an inordinate amount of time just, like, sitting on forums, browsing through Twitter, browsing release lists, sitting on itch.io. Like, that's 90% of my job is just curation and going through and finding... Oh, they do regrow. Look at that. They grew. Okay, well, that's good. That looks like the birch supply, then, is probably going to last us a little while. And our first carrot harvest is about to come in. So that's good. That'll fill out our stockpiles pretty gloriously. Uh, we have a lot of logs stored up. I think it's time for us to make our little beaver hangout over here. Let's make ourselves a little beaver campsite and see how it goes. It says it's going to take 15 logs, so that's five trips for each of our beavers. But we've got a lot of logs stored up, so I don't think it's going to be that difficult of a task. I do like how the harvesting of the carrots is incremental right there. That's a nice little detail. I do enjoy that a lot. I think that's a really, really good thing. You guys will know that I'm a fan of aesthetic kind of things that make the game feel more immersive and I like the fact that as they go to the little carrot harvest they do little chunks of it first they do the exact same thing in banish when you've got wheat fields and whatnot but yeah my video production process is actually pretty simple it usually takes me about an hour and a half to cut a video I guess for YouTube uh, but the vast majority of that, it may have taken me an hour and a half to two hours to find that individual game. Some ga some some weeks are easier than others. Like, some weeks the content comes to me and my job is super easy. And then other weeks, like, it's been about a month and a half of, like, not a lot of indie games coming out. And that's been rough because, like, I spend probably at least an hour and a half to two hours a night just looking for what I'm going to be playing the next day. And so that's where it starts to be t time consuming for me. Some people make videos where they have, like, a game like Subnautica or a game like Deliver Us the Moon, or a game like Kindergarten, and they spend like, you know, two hours recording, and then they spend like two hours editing to get one episode out, and that's the game that they play for like weeks on end until they eventually beat it, and they upload maybe once every other day or once a day. For me, the, the time-consuming part of it is just finding the games. That's the biggest part for me. That makes me take a while in my production process. I like this game. I was a big fan of Banished, and I was always kind of disappointed that it never got DLCs and expansions, and it never kind of got more stuff and it never got more polished and refined I, I don't know what the developers of Banish moved on to that'd be an interesting thing to look into I don't know maybe Banish did get DLCs and whatnot I don't think I've looked at Banish since I was a baby YouTuber <laughs> fun fact about my channel Banished almost killed my channel Banished back when I first started I did a series on Banished and being who I am I do everything blind because I find that the game is more interesting to me blind like I find gameplay to be much more fun when I do it blind for a viewer, I can see why it can be frustrating that I don't know things certain times when I go through a game. But. Oh, wow. We've got shafts. It transfers power. Oh. Okay, so there's kind of like a clockwork jam to this whole thing that you've kind of got to be, like, down with. Okay, well, let's build our first water wheel over here. This will supply us with 290 horsepower. We'll put it right there for right now. I don't know if I'm going to connect it to anything just yet, but I assume that that shaft right there is going to screw into a crank that's like at the carpentry shop, for example. That's a lot of science points we need to move up the tech tree. We can get a wheat field. We've also got potato fields, but I don't think we quite have the amount of people that's required in order to, like, need the... I'm kind of watching, and I'm kind of waiting to see if we need more carrots, too. That's another thing that I'm a little bit curious about. Yeah, Banished almost killed my channel back when it first came out. Not the game itself, but just my play of the game. I played it blind and I wiped like six episodes in while I was kind of learning the game and fiddling around with systems. And man, there was a riot. People were very, very upset. Hmm, people were upset. 
I like to do things blind though. It's just what I enjoy. Some people like to go into things with a ton of research. And I think that does make for very, very good content creation. But I think there's something to be said about blind too. But then again, I'm old school. I started cutting videos in 2012, back in the unedited C Nanners Minecraft days. And so I come from like a different generation of content creators too. Nowadays, I can see why a lot of people do edited content because you need that to break through. I'm very lucky and fortunate in the fact that like I got established before standards were absurdly high. And I also got established in kind of a genre that I share with the kind of Northern Lion and Total Biscuit and those guys where what I do does not require a ton of editing. And in fact, I think benefits from not having a ton of editing. Like when I used to look for reviews, that's why I started on YouTube is back in 2011, 2012, I got frustrated because there was all these indie games coming out, but the reviews of them were all ridiculously edited. They only showed you like high action sequences with a lot of stuff going on. And they didn't show you the actual guts and mechanics of the game, which is what I appraised when I would go in to buy a game. And I thought to myself, that's an opening right there. I should make a channel where I play the game kind of unedited, and I give you an idea of what the game is like, first impression style, where you get all of the nitty gritty, and you get all of the mechanics, and all of the things that are happening, so that you can decide if the game is the right choice for you. I don't know if my beavers can actually walk through these little areas, but we've got a carpentry shop over here, and I think we should probably get one of those. Our population is growing right now. But it's not growing at, like, a ridiculous rate. It's growing at a somewhat rate. We could definitely... I, I think it's going to be important that we maintain a labor force so that we don't bottleneck ourselves as far as production goes. We're up to 66 science right now. I don't think that buys anything. We can get a bakery. So it'll make flour. So we've got a wheat field right there. We've got a grill. We've got a bakery. Do we have a windmill? Pumps water for the beavers to drink. Okay, so we could actually get rid of these little guys right here, and we can move up the tech tree a little bit with the water pump. Uh, do we have the we have a paper maker? What is that right there? A forester plants trees in the area around the building. We should probably save up for that first, would be my thought. Well, there's the grist mill, too. That only requires 50 points. We could get that right now. Yeah, let's get the grist mill. So does that need to be powered? Requires that it be connected to a shaft. Okay. So if we put that right there, where does the shaft connect to? The shaft connects to the back of it. All right. Good to know. I may have... It's possible that I may have organized my society a little improperly, I think. But we should have room. What does the carpentry require? So the carpentry's right there. I think I should be able... If we've got, like, a T-joint... We do. We have a T-joint right there. So we should be all right, I think. So I want that to go out to there. I don't know if the beavers can go underneath this. I sincerely hope that they can. Yeah, like I don't know if the beavers can actually get underneath these little pipes right here that we're laying down, the little shafts. But if they can, it'll make this simpler. If they cannot, this gets a little more complicated. So I'm going to put a carpenter in right there. And I'm going to put a grist mill in right here. And we're going to deactivate these buildings. These buildings are not going to be active buildings for us. And then let's get the shaft all run out. And I think what we'll want is for it to go like that right there. And then we keep running this over to here. And I don't know where the plug is on that building. So I think it behooves us to like really make sure that we deploy these first. They can still go around the outside if they need to. So, you know, two beavery workers go around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Oh, we need planks for that. We need planks and gears. So we can just cancel that for now. Yeah, and then we can cancel this. And then we can break that as well. We'll leave this open right here because we're going to need planks anyways. So... No biggie, no harm, no foul. I'm going to leave this deactivated for a second. That requires a plank as well. Oh. So, we can't make the T-joint until we have planks. So, this needs to be like a direct connect situation until then. Okay, that's fine. We learned a new thing. That's cool. Well, it didn't need to be a direct connection, I guess. I guess I foobarred that. Like, we could have just used a shaft turn to do it. I wasn't 
thinking super clearly right there. But we'll put that down right there, and then we'll build the carpenter over here, and we'll just have a turn right there. I do like the, the, the beavers live in like a clockwork society. That's pretty cool. I like how animated everything is. I think they're off to a very, very good start with this alpha. Like, it's got the little details that have me interested in the project. So, like, if we were playing this right now and the doors didn't open when the beavers went inside, the logs didn't add up when they put them into the stockpile, the stockpile was just a covered building, you know, if this didn't turn right here, it was just like a connector, essentially. They didn't go down to the trough to drink. I'd be a little bit worried about this project, and I'd say it could swing either way. But so far, like, I find that the attentiveness of a developer to details is really what seems to imply that a project is going to be successful. When developers put effort into the details, it says to me that they care. And that doesn't mean that other developers don't have work orders. It's just to me an instant sign that the developers like they care about this project. They like this project. Because designing little things like animated tiles and whatnot with little cogs that connect them all perfectly and have little support structures that attach to the wheel and it turns at the same rate that the wheel does if you look. Like, that's the kind of stuff to me that like matters that's the kind of stuff that shows that like the developer is into this project he's excited about it or she's excited about it and that they're gonna like go the distance i guess that might be a brash assumption on my part but it is something to me it doesn't signal that a game is going to be an instant success but it does signal that the game it's got that little extra push above all the projects that didn't try to put in those details and trust me those projects do exist I get bombarded every single week with probably 25, 35 games, and the ones where people are putting an attention to detail are immediately apparent versus the ones where they're just trying to get core mechanics in and they don't really seem to care about the aesthetic display that the game is putting forward for an end user. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. This game right here is called Timberborn. I hope you guys liked it. If you want to see more, leave a like on the video. I'll see what I can do to add a little bit extra. We can go a little bit further into the game. It does seem like there's quite a bit of content here. Like, we haven't gotten to the end of buildings at all. There's still probably 15, 20 buildings that we're not able to build yet. And so I wouldn't mind diving a little bit further on. And if you want to get the game for yourself, I'll have the link to the developer's Discord down below in the description so you can join up from there. And then they'll have a download section that you can go to to play the game for yourself if you wanted to enjoy it. Aside from that, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie gaming every single day so that you don't have to. I appreciate you stopping on in. Hi, do and take care, everybody. I will have a super awesome something off the skillet tomorrow. Hot, fresh, and ready. Goodbye.